during sleep, cortical and subcortical networks within the brain engage in highly structured oscillatory dynamics that can be observed in the electroencephalogram, or EEG. The ability to accurately describe changes in sleep state from these oscillations has thus been a major goal of sleep medicine. To this end, the three modules in this series will introduce you to multi-taper spectral analysis as a way to characterize sleep while preserving the rich dynamics of the sleep EEG. Without any prior knowledge about spectral analysis, by the end of these three modules, you will be able to 1. Describe the basics of spectral analysis and some common approaches to spectral estimation. 2. Understand multi-taper spectral analysis and how to apply it to sleep EEG data. And 3. Discuss and interpret sleep through the use of the multi-taper spectrogram. The perception that the math behind spectral estimation is difficult may make it feel like a barrier. However, we will show that it is actually very easy to understand the concepts behind spectral estimation without having to be familiar with any of the underlying mathematics. The three modules of this series will cover the following topics. These modules summarize the work presented in the publication Sleep Neurophysiological Dynamics Through the Lens of Multi-Taper Spectral Analysis. Clinically, we typically view the sleep EEG in terms of the polysomnogram. The polysomnogram displays a series of EEG signals displayed as waveforms over time, as well as a number of other physiological measurements such as muscle movement, airflow, and EKG. To the lay viewer, this is very complicated. These are complex waveforms that require skilled professionals to properly decipher. Throughout history, people have developed ways of simplifying these complex EEG waveforms to make sense of what they mean in terms of sleep. In the early 1920s, Hans Berger invented the EEG. He was the first person to notice differences between the sleeping and wake EEG, discovering and coining the concept of the alpha wave. The alpha wave, an 8 to 12 hertz oscillation, he observed appearing when subjects were awake and at rest with their eyes closed. With this discovery of changes in brainwave activity between sleep and wake states came the need to categorize the changes. In the 1930s, Loomis, Harvey, and Hobart defined a set of stages A through E. While these stages aren't particularly specific, it was progress in how we were able to characterize sleep through the process of sleep staging. In the 1950s, rapid eye movement, or REM sleep, was discovered by Azarinsky and Kleitman, and that discovery presented a new way of looking at sleep. We could now break sleep up into REM versus non-REM sleep. In 1968, the Rechtschaffen and Kale system, which we now call the R and K system, was developed. This broke sleep up into 30-second epochs or time windows of wake, REM, and four stages of non-REM, later condensed to three stages. Around the 1960s, to perform RNK scoring, a specialized EEG machine with a series of moving pens would mark changes in brain waves across EEG channels on a scrolling piece of paper tape. A skilled clinician, trained in polysomnography, would then go through each 30-second window of data, visually identifying the sleep stage and scoring them manually. This would divide the full night's EEG recording into a series of sleep scores, each corresponding to a 30-second APOC. With each 30-second APOC scored for the entire night, the progression of sleep stages were then charted to create a hypnogram. Of note, the selection of 30-second APOCs is a relic from the 1930s, where the EEG machines were designed to automatically cut the scrolling paper every 30 seconds. The use of 30-second APOCs was simply adopted by RNK scoring based on this mechanical function designed over 30 years before the development of RNK scoring. There is no physiological or scientific basis for this selection of 30-second windows. Nearly 50 years later, what has changed? Now, instead of the specialized machine, we look at the computer equivalent, 
and instead of a piece of paper with 30 seconds of data, we look at 30 second windows on a computer screen. Overall, very little has changed, and we are essentially using the same process developed in the 1960s. This approach to polysomnography has lasted a long time, but that is not to say sleep staging is without its drawbacks. In effectively every dimension studied, sleep has been shown to be a continuous, dynamic neural process consisting of a complex interaction between cortical and subcortical networks. However, sleep staging reduces this dynamic continuum of sleep to an abstract, low-resolution summary of discrete semantic states. We are losing information by discretizing our signal in terms of both state and time. To show what we mean by discretizing state and time, consider the signal shown. In terms of discretizing state, we are saying that the signal at any time can only be characterized as one of a finite number of possible states, five states in the case of sleep staging. The signal becomes very block-like as it is forced to fit to these states, and as a result, it does not allow us to examine intermediate states or transitions of stages. For the hypnogram, we are also discretizing time, meaning we are using one state to describe the signal over a fixed amount of time. In the case of sleep staging, this is a 30 second window. As a result, we are unable to look at anything that occurs at a finer time scale than 30 seconds. With sleep staging, we are essentially saying that 30 seconds is the fastest that sleep can change, which is not true. Sleep staging, based on RNK scoring, has long served as a useful tool and an essential foundation for numerous important advances in sleep research and in clinical sleep medicine. However, it comes with several substantial drawbacks. In practice, sleep staging is low resolution because we are reducing the continuum in both state and time, inaccurate because it is subjective, as it requires a technician to visually categorize the state, and even in healthy subjects, the average rate of disagreement between experienced technicians is about 20%. It is also time consuming because it takes a long time to A, be trained how to properly apply the scoring, and B, score the hundreds of 30 second apochs that make up the night. And finally, it is inflexible because while there are rules to allow it to be repeatable, it results in it not currently being able to explicitly account for the vast heterogeneity in the sleep EEG observed in both healthy and clinical populations. For all of these reasons, sleep staging is a poor gold standard for analysis and may have helped build this false belief that the EEG is a dead end for sleep analysis. Therefore, what we need is an objective means of analyzing the sleep EEG as a continuum, and to do this, many researchers have looked to spectral estimation. First of all, what is spectral estimation? Spectral estimation is a powerful tool for analyzing any signal we think of as being composed of oscillations or waves. It quantitatively breaks down a waveform signal in terms of all the different frequency waves that make it up and their oscillatory power. For example, white light is a waveform composed of colors of different wavelengths. When we use a prism, it breaks the waveform down such that we can observe the individual color wavelengths that make it up. Another example is sound. Sound is composed of waves at different frequencies. A graphic equalizer breaks sound down into the low, medium, and high frequency waves. The breakdown of light and sound into their component frequencies by the prism and graphic equalizer could both be considered a form of spectral estimation. Researchers have looked to spectral estimation rather than sleep staging because spectral estimation is really good at analyzing oscillations. What are oscillations? Oscillations are patterns that repeat themselves over a certain time period or frequency. An example of a perfect oscillatory signal is a sine wave like that shown. Changing the width of the sine wave is what then gives us different frequencies measured in cycles per second or hertz. The EEG signal 
is the combination of many oscillations from different neural networks occurring at different frequencies. Here we have a 1 Hz and a 5 Hz oscillation. If they are part of the same signal, they combine to generate the waveform now shown. If you look closely, you can still visually identify the 1 Hz and 5 Hz parts. If we add another frequency, let's say an 8 Hz oscillation, the waveform further changes to now incorporate an 8 Hz frequency component. We have constructed what appears to be a complicated waveform, but it is really just the combination of three relatively simple oscillations. We commonly see our EEG signal as a waveform. We refer to any signal that is represented as a waveform over time as being in the time domain. Spectral estimation operates under the assumption that any oscillatory signal can be broken down into the pure sine waves of different frequencies that make it up. In doing so, it allows us to view the signal in a different way. We call this the frequency domain. This plot is called the power spectrum. The power spectrum shows us the power or strength of the signal at each of the component frequencies of our waveform. In the power spectrum, the x-axis notes the frequency and the y-axis the power. For our signal here, since the signal is composed of three sinusoids with equal amplitude, we see three spikes of equal height at 1, 5, and 8 hertz. In this case, the pattern and frequency properties of the signal do not change over its duration. We categorize these as stationary signals. However, when we are looking at brain signals, as the sleep state changes, the signal properties change. When we have a signal that changes its properties over time, we call it a dynamic or non-stationary signal. For example, we again have a complicated signal still made up of different frequencies, the 1, 5, and 8 hertz, but now they appear at different times. If we were to try and look at it as a single power spectrum, that wouldn't capture the dynamics we observe. In order to view the dynamic changes, we can look at what is called a spectrogram which transfers the waveform into what we call the time frequency domain. In the spectrogram, the x-axis is time, and at every time point, we see the associated power spectrum. The y-axis denotes the frequency, and the color represents the power, with the hotter the color, the greater the power. In this case, what we see is a strong band at 1 Hz that is on for the duration, a band at 5 Hz, which starts a little later, and an 8 Hz band, which then starts even later. The spectrogram is a way of dynamically describing the spectral analysis of a complex signal over time in a very efficient way. Ultimately, what we will show in these modules is how we can take the sleep EEG and rather than representing it as a hypnogram, represent it by the spectrogram, which is completely based on objective data and contains much more information than the hypnogram. Even if you don't fully understand this image yet, you can already see repeating patterns that correspond to different stages of sleep. Here is some real EEG data that would often be said to be corrupt with artifacts and as a result, it is often discarded. This signal is a mixing of the EEG signal, ambient line noise, and ECG data. One of the nice things about spectral analysis is it breaks the signal down into each of the component frequencies. Fortunately, in this case, each contributor to the signal resides at a distinct frequency. Using the spectrogram, we can discern the line noise resides up high at 60 Hz, the ECG resides around 1 to 2 Hz, and the actual EEG signal of interest is an evolving band around 10 Hz. This 10 Hz represents the eyes closed alpha oscillation of the subject starting to fall asleep. As such, rather than having to discard the data, using this method we can separate out our desired signal from the confounding factors. If this type of analysis is so useful, why hasn't time frequency analysis taken off in the study of sleep? Aside from overcoming the inertia associated with established procedures, and the relative simplicity of sleep staging, one reason is that the previously prevailing techniques for spectral estimation 
produce noisy and inaccurate estimates of the power spectrum. Typically, the way people have categorized EEG oscillations is by breaking them up into canonical frequency bands, each with a distinct frequency range. Then, they would look at the power, which is the strength of the oscillation, in each of these bands over time. This is a nice way of looking at it, but it limits our ability to interpret what we see. This shows just over an hour and a half of sleep, but just using the established bands, it has very low frequency resolution. The resolution can be improved by using different methods, such as the single tapered spectrogram, which we'll talk about in the next module. However, while the resolution has been improved significantly, it is a very noisy signal. What we are going to focus on in the following modules is a method called multi-taper spectral analysis, which gives us the resolution needed to see the rich spectral structure of the EEG signal. That concludes part one of this series. In the next module, we will look at methods of spectral estimation and why multi-taper spectral estimation produces a spectrogram with this improved resolution. We will also discuss how to determine the parameters necessary for generating the multi-taper spectrogram.